A few years ago, lithium power stations changed the game for overlanders. It unlocks running a fridge for a lot more people. Because you no longer need to hardwire a dual battery setup. Since then, power stations have gotten better. But for most 4x4 enthusiasts, we are still just using them for running a fridge or charging electronics. The newer models do have better specs, but they don't really unlock anything new for camping. For the new EcoFlow Delta 2, you could find a close competitor on every spec on paper, but it has a very unique combination of specs, which I think might just be the next game changer, specifically for 4x4 overlanders like me. I was very lucky to have EcoFlow send me a unit to test out. It delivered everything I hoped for, and I actually began removing my hardwired dual battery setup, except it fell short in one unexpected way, which kind of broke the deal for me. It was so close to being perfect. So in this video, I will show you why Delta 2 is so unique for overlanding, what game-changing thing it can do, and at last, what made it fell short to replace my dual battery setup. This review is focused on car camping and overlanding specifically, so I am not interested in doing a full spec dump or testing out every possible functions. We will keep it relevant and practical. All right, let's get started. Hi, welcome to Tinker's Venture, I'm Kai. The most popular capacity among overlanders is probably 500 or 700 watt hours. So the 1000 watt hour Delta II is on the bigger side. However, the Delta II is actually easier to pack in your car than most smaller units. This is because it has a narrow and tall form factor with ports located front and back. Most other power stations have a more squatty aspect ratio with ports located on the wide side. From my experience, Delta II's form factor is far more efficient to fit into a 4x4 and still have access to all the ports. For example, this was actually the only power station that fit into this tiny space where I used to mount my secondary battery. I can't even do that with this tiny 300 watt hour unit. The other critical spec is power output. There are plenty of more powerful units out there, but the Delta II is unique for its power to capacity ratio. Let me explain. In almost all power stations, you'll find 1000 watt hour capacity gets you around 1000 watt of maximum output. So a power to capacity ratio of one. This also applies to most standalone 12 volt lithium batteries. However, the 1000 watt hour Delta II can output 1800 watt continuous power. To get this much power from other brands, you need to go bigger, like the Jackery 1500 or the Blue Yeti AC200P. A bigger capacity means a bigger physical volume. You probably don't care if you have an RV or a van, but for a 4x4, space is always a premium. Paired with the squatty form factor, those units are often just too bulky to fit into a 4x4. So being able to pull 1800 watt from such a compact form factor is very special. And 1800 watt is a magic number. If you look for appliances that would be useful for camping, there are many below 1000 watt, but you'll find a whole bunch of them right around 1500 watt. Delta II's 1800 watt unlocks a lot of possibilities and builds enough margin on top. We'll test out some examples in the next sections, so make sure you stick around. Technically, most of these benefits could be achieved with the Delta I released a couple years ago. But the Delta II now uses lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which has about six times the life cycle than the lithium iron predecessor. With LFP, practically speaking, for people like you and me, we don't need to worry about battery lifespan anymore, and this makes it much easier to justify the investment. The Delta II is capable of expanding to 2000 watt hours with its smart extra battery, which is $200 cheaper than the main unit. You can stack it on top, so this retains the narrow and tall form factor. The rubber feet lightly interlock with the main unit, and you can easily tie down the combo by the handles. The only gripe I have is the connecting cable sticking out way too much, which kind of defeats the narrow and tall form factor. I hope EcoFlow will make a shorter cable with 90 degree ends specifically for the stack configuration. Just a straight shot from top to bottom. 
Now we know why the Delta II is special for overlanding. Let's see some practical tests and how it can actually change the way we camp. I am not a hardcore camper, and I am not good with cold. Yeah, I camp for relaxation and not man versus wild challenge. The most popular tent heater in the overland world is probably the propane Mr. Heater. Most people don't run it overnight, but just for a few minutes to get in and out of the sleeping bag. But I have two main problems with this heater. First is condensation. I already have a ton of condensation overnight, and I hate to pack my tent with even more water. And second, it takes a long time for the heat to spread out to make it warm enough to get out. With Delta II's 1800 watt inverters, I can now run this electric space heater. I tested it on a cold morning where it was 27 degrees inside the tent. I left the Delta II in my FJ and ran an extension cord into the tent. Soon after turning it on, I can immediately feel the heat wave because the built-in fan. I could get out comfortably right away and no need to wait like with the propane heater. And more importantly, this is all dry heat. After sitting in direct full blast for two minutes, I was already too warm, so I've dialed it down. During this test, I took my time with filming and measurements, so I had it on for about 17 minutes, and that used about 30% of capacity. But for a normal morning routine, still not rushing, I use about 15 to 20% of capacity. By the way, the Ecofool app is really handy. The connection is always quick and reliable. I can monitor power and battery level from anywhere. And even if I forgot to turn on my AC ports the night before, I can do so through the app in my sleeping bag. But back to the space heater. It is a lot more effective than a good old propane heater. It is also smaller, lighter, safer, and more reliable. Now, a heat exchanger style diesel heater also have the fast and dry heat. You can also run it all night long so the entire tent is warm. That is hard to beat. However, it does come with the trade-off of handling diesel fuel, ducting, placing it outdoors, and after all, it still needs electric power to run. While the electric space heater is far simpler. For overnight heating, I use a 110 volt electric blanket inside my zero degree sleeping bag. I would turn it on a few minutes before bed so it was very welcoming when I crawl in. I use a 110 volt AC blanket because it has finer and more precise temperature control. Just like your fridge, they don't run constantly. They just kick on here and there to maintain the set temperature. The sleeping bag has good insulation, so it don't take much energy to stay warm. After eight hours of sleep at 27 degrees with a zero degree sleeping bag, it used about 30% of charge. I could definitely survive the night with just a zero degree bag, but it wouldn't be pleasant at all. With a blanket, I didn't even wear socks, and my feet were perfectly warm. Overall, this full electric tent heating setup was game changing for me. But wait, there's more. Hot water is such an essential part of camping. After trying many different setups, a jet boil flash to me is the fastest and most convenient way to boil water. Now we have the Delta II, how about using this 1500 watt electric kettle? Both units has 1 liter capacity, but the jet boil has 2600 watt rated power. On paper, the kettle is no match, but let's test it side by side. Just like all camping gear, the jet boil takes some procedure to set up, but let's ignore that. According to my kettle, our cold water started at 37 degrees. So it will take extra long to boil. Oh no, my old jet boil has a bad start with its piezoelectric starter. These things never last, but let's ignore that too. Despite a big difference in rated power, both setup come to a full boil around the same time. Well, yeah, you just need to make sure you shut off the jet boil in time. On the other hand, not only does the electric kettle shut off automatically, this unit can also shut off at various lower temperature settings. Very fancy. Boiling 26 ounce water in this test used about 12% of capacity. But remember, we started from ice cold. With no gas or flame, this electric kettle is safer, especially around kids. Heck, you can even do it inside the car if you want. 
I know, using an electric kettle at camp just kind of feels wrong. It makes an overlander joke. But if you forget about mainstream labeling, this to me is another game changer. And you know what? Despite all the fancy functions, this kettle is only one third the cost of my jet boil. And that's not counting all the fuel canister I have empty. Similarly, the space heater and the electric blanket we used earlier were all inexpensive compared to dedicated camping and overland gear, but they are more effective in what they do. By simply tapping into the 110 volt market, we just open up a whole new world. And the possibility definitely doesn't stop there. For example, I can now use a 1500 watt induction cooktop. It is fairly compact, super fast, very easy to clean, and totally windproof. My wife can now bring her 1600 watt hair dryer so she won't have a headache after showering at camp. And not saying I will, but I can bring a freaking microwave. I'm sure I'll get laughed at on the trail, but I bet you're gonna come ask me to heat up your cold ass sandwiches. Yes, all these appliances consume a lot of power, but just like the space heater, they are so fast you don't need to run them for long to get the job done. So the energy consumption, which is power multiplied by time, is still practical. The Delta II is a $1,000 investment, but most of those gears you probably already have at home and use them every day. Even for the power station itself, when you are not camping, is an excellent home power backup. So with this setup, you don't really need to buy a separate set of gears exclusively for camping. If you think of it this way, it might make a lot more sense financially. Now, if this is so good, why on earth people are still spending so much money and effort building hardwired dual battery setup? Let's take a look. In my opinion, the biggest drawback of all plug and play power station is the lack of fast DC to DC car charging. My hardwired Red Arc charger charges my secondary battery at 375 watt. This is fast enough so that the driving next day can always replenish what I used last night. But all power stations can only charge up to 100 watt from the car. This is limited by the cigarette lighter outlets themselves. Depending on how much you use and how long you drive, it is a lot harder to keep a power station topped off. If we do it for days, we will eventually run out of juice. Yes, the Delta II does have a respectful 500 watt solar charging capability, but not everyone has solar and you cannot always bet on good weather. Most dual battery setup also have solar capability, but when the condition isn't good, they can still 100% rely on the car alternator. But wait, most 4x4s nowadays come with a 400 watt AC inverter right from the factory. 400 watt is more powerful than my Red Arc. Can we use that to charge the power station? Hmm. The first issue is most power stations this size have too high AC charging power. They will just trip the factory inverter. But for the Delta II, you can actually dial down the AC charging power through the app. So this solved that problem. The second issue for me was the Toyota inverter will automatically go into 115 watt mode when I shift out of park. But I could easily bypass that with a DIY 400 watt anytime mod. Thanks Tacoma World. With all roadblocks removed, I was so stoked about this. With 400 watt car charging capability, this is now a true plug and play dual battery setup. But when I plug it in, wait, what's going on? It is not charging. The Toyota inverter was not tripping. And I also tried even lower setting on the Delta II. It charges from the wall just fine, but nothing from the Toyota inverter. So my best guess is the Toyota inverter has modified sine wave and the Delta II didn't like it. Damn it, it is so close to being perfect. I really hope EcoFlow can walk around this via a firmware update. If that ever happens, I will for sure pin it in the description below. 
Yeah, you could definitely hardwire a pure sine wave inverter just to charge the Delta II. Honestly, it is not a bad idea, but for most people, that defeats the plug-and-play clean installation. But if we take a step back, if we're just doing a day trip or a weekend trip, a single charge plus whatever you get from 100 watt car charging might be plenty enough for most people. Not everyone does week-long pro-level true expedition overland, and that is okay. For example, when I go snowboarding and need to heat up my food inside my car, or when I just camp on Friday night after work, then go wheeling for just a day, something like that is probably way more common for most of us. And the Delta II is perfect for that. So the lack of fast car charging may not be a deal breaker for most. Heck, here's a crazy idea. If I was truly in a pinch, I'll plug it into the wall at a gas station. With extremely impressive 1200 watt AC charging, I'll get 25% charged by the time I finish a number two. Probably more if I play with my phone. It's almost like a Tesla stopping at a supercharger. This is Elon Musk. Nevertheless, for hardcore overlanders who do longer trips in more remote areas, I don't think Delta II can replace a true dual battery setup. Yet, EcoFlow, if you are watching, you better do that firmware update. Now, if you are intrigued by the Delta II, I have a discount code in the description below that can be applied on top of whatever sales it has going on. Using my code and affiliates link will get you the best deal and support my channel at the same time. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.